adjourned. Brings us to the um, special meeting of the Glendale City Council. I hope folks at GTV6 are following. I think they are very well. Let's have a roll call, please. Council members Draymond? Here. Friedman? Here. Carroll? Here. Beaver? Here. Jarian? Here. May we have your report? The agenda for the June 15, 2010 special meeting of the Glendale City Council was posted on Thursday, June 10, 2010 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Before you, the item is a Director of Administrative Services, finance regarding third quarter financial update and adjustments to the adopted 2009-2010 budget. A 2A is a resolution of appropriation amending the adopted 2009-2010 budget. Thank you. Mr. Starberg. Mr. Mayor, we're going to try and do uh, a better job than uh, we did two weeks ago on presenting to you a, an overview of the third quarter uh, budget report as well as recommended <coughs> budget adjustments to be concluded uh, by the end of the current fiscal year. Uh, let me ask uh, Bob Elliott to take you through the components. We tried to compartmentalize this for a little easier ease of understanding uh, what's taking place here. Let me ask uh, Bob Elliott to give you the report, but uh, with your indulgence, I'd like to be able to consult in periodically where need be for uh, helping to uh, bring some clarity to some of the issues. Bob, go ahead. Thanks, Jim. Uh, I guess this goes under the uh, heading of, uh, at first you don't succeed, we'll try again. Um, what we wanted to do um, in, in, uh, with the confusion, I think, that uh, came about uh, last or two weeks ago when we presented this, um, was really uh, go back a little bit and talk, uh, talk about what an internal service fund is and, and what those deficits uh, mean and, and, and uh, kind of differentiate them between what a uh, budget deficit and an accounting deficit is and then talk about the adjustments again in, in a slightly different way. So just a, a pure definition, really an internal service fund is an, a... Uh, uh, a fund that we set up to service the other funds within the city for common uh, items like insurance, workers' compensation, medical insurance, so on and so forth. Um, it is a charge out to all the other user departments and revenue coming into the internal service fund is then used to pay for that activity, insurance premiums, medical premiums, uh, or workers' compensation uh, insurance in, in those cases. So the question came out on the $35 million deficit, or was it a budget shortfall? Um, what we wanted to do is, is really bring to light the four uh, funds in question that do have what I would term accounting deficits. Accounting deficits are accumulated uh, negative fund balances over years of operations due to um, losses in the case of the insurance fund, uh, claims for the compensation fund, uh, benefits uh, for the employees' benefits fund or the RHSP. Um, and I think as we met and discussed, um, there's a, there is a nexus between, in these funds, their available cash balances and their operating ability and what their fund balances are. Um, we've listed the fund balances in this chart. Um, these are what we um, make up the $35 million deficit is not a budget shortfall, as was termed. Um, and these are the uh, uh, cash balances of those funds as of the end of last year. But let me also emphasize, although Bob will say it again later, this is not related to the general fund, which is the one that gets most of the attention in the city, and the one which I'm afraid uh, an early article on this in the news press, although had all the right facts as, 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 as it relates to the numbers, left the impression that the general fund now had a deficit. This is not the general fund budget. This is not even the citywide budget. This is dealing with these four different internal service funds that are very unique as to the uh, whole budgetary system of the city. And these long-term, what we've identified as long-term financing needs of these funds over time in order from an accounting standpoint to have adequate resources to meet what we anticipate may be uh, charges against those funds. So again, the $35 million um, is not a budget shortfall. It is, is truly an accounting deficit that took uh, activity in those respective funds to create. Um, obviously, the easy one to discuss is the, the uh, insurance fund, which incurred uh, significant losses during the 05 rainstorms. 
and has yet to recover um, from that activity. That's the liability. Liability insurance, Liability correct. front. So right. we keep money around in case there's judgments or matters. Uh, exactly. Liability issues against the city that need to be resolved. Correct. Um, our plan to uh, address these deficits, and we, this first came to light last year when we presented the comprehensive annual financial report to city council. Um, it was a management letter comment. It wasn't a, um, a necessarily a finding from the auditors, but a comment that um, you have accumulated deficits in these funds and you probably need to start addressing them. So taking that, we had a number of meetings trying to figure out the best way to address this. Um, we decided on a 10-year rate plan where we would increase the rates uh, each year during the budget process. And these rates are charged out to all the user departments. It's not just a general fund, although the general fund does get a significant portion of these charges. It goes to um, any uh, department that has employees in case it, if it's a workers' compensation issue. Um, and we rate the insurance to the specific coverages and the liability to the claims where they're incurred. So again, going back to what we had suggested before was transferring some uh, funds from the general fund, and we have kind of realigned what our recommendation is. Um, as, as we showed, the cash balance in the liability fund is the poorest in terms of, of uh, any of the uh, four that in mentioned. Um, so our recommendation now is to, to uh, take uh, $2.7 million out of the general fund uh, in order to ref uh, basically refloat the uh, liability insurance fund to, to an extent. Um, we still have potentials for insurance recoveries, um, which is uh, still tied up. Um, we are moving forward with selling the homes that were part of the payouts uh, from this fund. Uh, the key thing now here in this fund is uh, its cash balance and, and lack of in an order to uh, pay our claims. Let me, let me add, the other component that uh, we will look forward to helping to put additional resources into this fund is uh, negotiations with AIG, the insurance company, uh, and potential litigation where we are hopeful of a settlement that will also infuse some additional resources back into the liability insurance fund. Generally, for those incidents in 2005, the general fund is generally uh, on the hook for those costs. Uh, the question was asked by the news press if, if these funds didn't get in, if these funds got in these conditions over time, uh, why didn't we recognize it sooner? Good question. In the general for the liability insurance fund, you recall the storms of 2005. We had the decisions and settlement in 2007, 2008, uh, and so for that reason, frankly, we were never anticipating uh, the outcome of those trials on the 2005 storms, and those those costs as a result of that uh, litigation and eventual. Uh, jury decision uh, has caused us to have considerably greater uh, payouts to the liability fund than we had originally anticipated. So assuming we uh, approve the, or you approve the $2.7 million transfer, um, we've, we've uh, projected this estimate of where our fund balance will be as of the end of this budget year. Uh, with uh, transferring the $2.7 million and with our estimated operations, will still be above our 30% threshold uh, minimum general fund reserve. The other transfer that we recommended, and this is in a different format again to address uh, the uh, um, deficits in the other funds, as well as pre-funding the general fund portion of the um, rate increases. All these internal service funds had slight rate increases. Um, obviously, medical insurance was about 10%. This uh, 845000 is the general fund's component for those rate increases. Again, the uh, big chunk of this is going uh, to the liability insurance fund, again, to provide a cash for operations and, and payment of claims. Some of the other accounting changes, um, and I probably didn't do, do it justice when I explained it before, um, we're asking for $11.7 million uh, in additional appropriation. Now, having said that, this is really an accounting uh, maneuver in terms of how we accounted for these funds. In the past, um, it was done as a pass-through. We didn't recognize the uh, income or the expense of these. Um, the uh, LA County has asked us now to uh, account for these as revenue in and expenditure out. This is simply recognizing that expenditure and getting council uh, appropriation authority to, to recognize that. If, if I can touch on this quickly. So this is not asking to spend more money 
not what this is about. We get $11.7 million from HUD. We spend it on our housing programs. Previously, those two things were offset so that in our budget and on our books, we didn't show an expense. HUD has said, well, we want you to recognize the $11.7 million we give you as a revenue, and we want you to recognize the money you spend on housing as an expenditure. The same money is just being accounted for in a way uh, that it's clear that it's money coming in and money being spent through our housing programs. Not the general fund, but our affordable housing programs. Uh, the second piece of this, very similar, this is more of an internal policy. Um, our HMO premiums, we didn't uh, record as revenue going into the medical insurance fund. We paid it out in from the fund in which it originated in. Um, I asked staff to uh, put all our medical insurance premium payouts through the medical insurance fund so we have better accountability and better tracking uh, of those costs uh, for the city. Again, this is an accounting adjustment to reflect that pass-through from whatever fund incurred the expense into the internal service fund. It's not new money, but it's appropriation authority in the internal service fund. Uh, the other thing we discussed was the uh, change in sewer uh, assets uh, with the L.A. Hyperion Agreement, um, the reduction in life from 100 years to 40 years. Um, we needed to have additional appropriation for depreciation expense, which is a non-cash expense um, that the sewer fund has to recognize. Truly another accounting cleanup in this case. Um, this is uh, similar in nature, um, as we discussed in the past, the uh, fleet fund. Um, as we put the fleet fund together and consolidated the four garages, uh, in a sense, we, we were took a, about a year to combine everything. We put all the vehicle replacements on hold. The money um, that the fleet fund captures from all the other operations goes into that fund in order to pay for new vehicles. Um, so the money is already there. We, we simply didn't have the appropriation authority because um, we delayed everything a year. And this uh, appropriation request is to cover the vehicles that were not purchased in 0809 and pushed over to 910. Again, the money was there in the respective funds. The majority of it was in the fleet and equipment maintenance fund. Um, the last part is truly additional appropriation requests, and these are for uh, additional costs uh, in the wireless uh, communication fund charges to uh, parking, sewer, and refuse. Don't skip over the uh, 65000 oh. for tax-defaulted properties. Um, that is, again, when the city has the ability to buy tax-defaulted properties, we need appropriation uh, and funding for those, and this is to refill that account. And that pretty much is it. Have any questions? Okay, are there any questions? I do have two cards. If you'd like, I'll go to the public first. Mike Mohill, followed by Herbert Milano. <clears throat> Mike Mohill, resident Glendale. I'm glad the uh, our, our finance gentleman cleared us up about the $35 million shortfall that uh, got my attention last time we were here, big time. Uh, I only ask that uh, council think about Mr. John Wooden when he would always say, as Mr. Weaver would say last time, make sure you do your personal best. Do the budget. When you read the budget and you interpret the budget, that's my concern. I'm not going to go into detail of it all. Let Mr. Milano do that. The other thing is, the other question I like to ask is, what would Susie Orman do? Would she say this budget is on target? We need to change the figures? Where are we going? Thank you. Thank you, Herbert Milano. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mayor Najari, members of the City Council and City staff. My name is Herbert Molano. Uh, I wondered, you know, many of you um, do not necessarily come from environments where you're dealing continually with regard to fund accounting. And I was wondering how you look at these numbers and be able to ad address these quarterly reports and the changes that you find with these quarterly reports. Um, 
you can look at the funds, or you can look at the expenditures by department, and I think that by department it's a little bit easier to grasp. You can look at the general fund, and you can look at these other um, funds like the internal service funds, and you wonder whether you're getting a complete picture. It is my contention that with the general fund, you do not get a complete picture of governmental expenditures, as most people would assume that you do. I have a couple of problems with it, because the general fund, for example, does not include the police augmentation fund. So here's a police expenditure of day-to-day -day regular operations that does not appear in the general fund, and yet eventually the monies are coming from it. The other problem I have is that we have these other internal funds which also deal with employee expenditures and costs having to do with you know, insurance and benefits and post-employment benefits and so forth that are separate. And so we really don't get a full picture, really, of city's operational activity. But if years ago, we used to get some really good quarterly reports, trends, which is one of the best ways for, I think, for someone to take a look at what's taking place. And a few years ago, we used to get these very colorful trend graphs that finance department used to provide. And even in 2003 uh, years ago, on June 12th, we used to get some excellent general budget and, uh, and also other trends funds. And this is a report from June 17th of three years ago. What I'd like to show you is that um, when you look at these reports, such as the summary appropriations by department, that you take a look at human resources because some of these funds here from um, internal service funds are kind of embedded in that particular department. But in effect, they really should be distributed among all the departments properly so that you can evaluate what is the true cost. Anyway, what I've decided to do, and if you see uh, up there, is a, a graph of what has occurred for the last 20 years with regard to uh, parks, libraries, police, and fire. And obviously, the graphs that you see for police and fire have been growing in the past 10 years at a significantly exponential rate. And it is through graphs that you get a better picture of what is taking place with regard to the expenditures. And you ask yourself, are these trends sustainable? And it is what I would ask if I were sitting on the dais, I would ask for finance to give me graphs and projections, as they used to do, but expanded by the department so you can get a better idea of what's taking place. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have no other cards uh, on this uh, topic. Mr. Starbird? Just, just a quick comment, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Milano's uh, statement that the police augmentation fund, for example, uh, in not being reflected in the general fund uh, doesn't give the whole picture. Uh, you'll recall in the upcoming year's budget uh, that you're holding a hearing on this evening. Uh, Mr. Elliott has recommended that we fold the police augmentation fund into the general fund uh, for the very reason that uh, from an accounting standpoint it should be reflected in the general fund. It was kept out as a separate fund so that we could actually track the cost of the police augmentation program and not have it lumped all into the general fund. For that very reason, we established a separate fund so we could track that program and whether or not we were going to be able to fully fund the 25 police officers and 11 staff who were added back then. Number two, uh, his assertion that the internal service funds also don't allow us to associate the costs with the appropriate fund, it doesn't really work that way. The reality is the general fund, all of the other funds of the city, GWP, water, electric, housing, uh, all the special uh, funds of the city and their operations, they do all pay, for example, for liability insurance, workers' compensation insurance, medical insurance. All of those costs are reflected in those budgets. The internal service funds just serve as a cost center which can receive those monies that are paid for services and then make the individual payments, for example, to workers' comp or to uh, our liability carrier and or make claims. Uh, so all of those costs are reflected in all of the many budgets of the various funds of the city that you approve as part of the budget. And those costs are allocated appropriately. Thank you, Mr. Weaver. So <clears throat> analogy, uh, Mr. Starbird, if I'm right, you have a child, you establish a savings account for them. And as they grow older, you take funds out of that when they need braces and when they need other major items uh, when they go to college and you pay out of that savings account that you set up. Is that kind of an analogy that you're talking about or, or am I way off? 
Well, no, I guess you could do that. I, I, I refer to the way, as a way of, of adequately accounting for the costs of all the city's operations in a way that those costs are reflected in the operations and their budgets. Uh, the internal service funds just become uh, uh, a, a means of centralizing whether it's payments for claims or payments to insurance carriers. So you collect your fees from all the operations that use those services, you put them in that fund, and then you account for a single payment like to workers' comp uh, or to our health carrier and the likes. It does not take any of those expenses or their recording out of those departments that rely on those services. Actually, to the contrary, to some extent, and Bob Elliott and I have had this conversation, to some extent, it tends to overstate the size of the city's budget. Because when the auditors show you the total government budget of all operations, they include, for example, the general fund, and they'll include the internal service funds, where the payments are recorded in the general fund as an expense that go to the workers' compensation fund. Then it records the workers' compensation fund's expenditures to pay for our workers' comp insurance also as an expense. There's, a bit of, there's actually a doubling up of expenses. Like so it has, dip, if, if, if nothing else, it actually has the, the tendency to overstate what is the city's expenditure side. But that's the way the auditors require that you do it. You show all of it, even though one fund's making a payment here into another fund, and that fund is making the expenditure, both of those uh, get reflected as appropriations and expenditures. Well, so for that, let me amend my analogy. I put money into my child's education fund or whatever. Uh, my uncle does, my cousin does. Everybody's paying us one fee, for it, and then you pay out hmm? to different things. Right. Okay, now I got it totally right. The only other thing I'd like to say, Mayor, I've said it many times, a budget is a living document. You're trying to forecast the future from trends that you have. There's no guarantee because you do not know the future exactly. So you have to anticipate if you're doing it right, you are conservative because you want to make sure that you're in the black and not going into the red. So things can happen throughout a year where you adjust just like we've done here today with additional reserves or whatever. So people often get confused. They think you establish a budget and you're going to live by that. Um, I was with the Corps and I did budgets for 10 years. The idea was to have... 98% expenditures, or you had to explain to Washington, D.C. why you didn't make the goal. So it was our colonel always, colonels that we always had, would call us in and give us all kinds of heck, not, I wouldn't say the other word, um, why we didn't make that goal. And there's always things that come up, so people get hung up on, well, the budget, you didn't meet the budget, it went over just a living document. Oh. Mr. Starburn. Uh, the risk of carrying this on too long, I will point out, though, that in the two years, the last two years' budgets during the greatest uh, downturn this state has certainly seen in decades, uh, you have actually increased the general fund reserves, and each year you have come in with a savings at the end of the year, and that was reflected for the current year as well where you will actually add the general fund reserves and you'll have over a million dollar in savings. Conservatively, expect it'll be more. Any other questions or comments? Do you want a motion? I just want to thank Mr. Elliott uh, for getting back and answering, uh, clearing up for me some of the issues that I had two weeks ago when, when it was brought forward. Um, and I think I... The largest part of this uh, adjustment is the, uh, the liability fund and those, uh, you know, the unfortunate and unlikely uh, judgments and rulings that we got from the court regarding the mudslide slash landslide uh, that occurred on Gladys Drive. So the un unfortunate, not uh, not foreseeable, um, but we have to adjust our budget to make make good on that. Mr. Quintero. Now, with this action today, uh, as we work through the uh, negotiations with the uh, different employee groups, this doesn't mean that we can't come back and alter whatever may need to be altered, right? 
Well, this is looking backward. This isn't. This third is the quarter. Thing. Yeah, so that's the yeah, third this, quarter. This is this is the, this is the okay. current budget year and the third quarter updates. So this is this fiscal year. Anything related to the employee groups, and those contracts will be in the upcoming fiscal year. Mr. Weaver, I'd like to move item two. Two A. Way. There a second. Second. Roll call, please. Council members, Draymond. Yes. Friedman. Yes. Montero. Yes. Weaver. Aye. Aaron Najarian. Yes. So motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We're adjourned. That covers our meetings. Yeah.